All right, everyone, welcome back to the second match of the night tonight for Runeterra Academy's weekly Legends of Runeterra League. I'm Domcast, joined again by Monte Cristo. How are you feeling after that, that little bit of a break? I'm feeling great, Dom. I got some food in me, had some water. <laughs> could use a cup. Of, could use a cup of coffee. I'm not even halfway to my oh, level I'm up condition, that. but <laughs> you know. We're, we're hanging in there. It's still early. I'm excited to get into these games. We got some really, oh, really yeah. spicy lineups here, uh, yeah. including a, an Aphelios Nami deck that my teammate Yang has been working on quite extensively. It's put well, a lot of the work coming up with this list. Let's just get right into it then. We'll look at the Aphelios Nami deck from Yang and see what all the hype is about. So walk us through it, Monty. Yeah, so this is very reminiscent of the Nami Zoe deck from last season. But uh, with the Sparklefly having been nerfed, we have the replacement of Boxtopus. If you've been playing the game for a while, you know how powerful Boxtopus is when it comes out as a 3-4. This deck, the Aphelios got nerfed because of Boxtopus' sins. No, not really, but Temple sure as hell did. Um, so this deck just has a lot of different pieces. Lunari Dustbringer acts as both a spell generator for Nami and a way to get your Aphelios out a little bit earlier, activate that Nightfall. Spacey Sketcher... Uh, you can discard the stuff off of Lunari Dustbringer to try and find more spells, more units, whatever you need. It helps you spot check a lot of situations. Boxtopus obviously just lets you control the board in conjunction with Nami or Gifts from Beyond. You can use it to heal up back massive amounts. You can just keep it big. You can protect it. Um, it's gonna. That's the main way this deck wants to interact with its units' pieces, with its opponents' pieces, and stay on top, st keep the board in their hands. Solari Priestess, letting you spot check other situations, adds, gives you a chance to find landmark removal, gives you a chance to find a traveler, just find more stuff, keep your hand generation going, all kinds of stuff available to that card. And Fleet Admiral Shelley, of course, we know how much of a powerhouse that card can be when it's on the board and gets set up. You just start giving everything plus one, plus one, and suddenly your opponent can't deal with you at all. As far as the spell sides of the deck go, Double Trouble, Mainstay, in any Nami deck at this point in time. No better way to dump your mana on turn three. Gifts from Beyond, of course, letting you pull that box to post out and helping you work towards that Aphelios level up. Sunblessed Vigor, just in there as a little bit of protection. Pretty standard Targon spells of Guiding Touch and Pale Cascade there, available to help you cycle, dump your mana, protect your cards, whatever you need to do. Two Hush, uh... Hush is pretty good in this meta game right now. If you haven't noticed, there are a lot of elusive Poros running around. Those things get kind of big, and they get a little bit difficult to deal with without a silence. But Hush makes them back into those nice tiny little one ones, and that is great. And Star Shaping, of course, just to keep your HP high. And finally, the last card in the deck is that Spell Thief. Maybe we'll get to see an Iceborne Legacy stolen at some point today. That would be kind of cool on the Burble Fish, don't you think, Dom? Uh, be that'd be an interesting, <laughs> that'd be an interesting turn of events to see the verbal the verbal fish suddenly become, uh, even stronger. But I I think it's going to be very interesting to see. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of Nami since the whole starfish sort of fell out of favor. You know, way back I think almost in like uh, no October uh, when when was the, when the last time that deck was saw at least on stream. But I'm I'm excited to see Nami come back out. I mean, Aphelios hasn't even been seen really at all since he came out as, as a card in the in the game overall so i'm i'm looking forward to seeing how this one plays out yeah felius definitely a little bit uh of a rare champion at this point <laughs> that uh that met nerf to three mana really made his weapons quite difficult uh to cast and made his level up mm -hmm. condition a bit more difficult to achieve uh, still very very strong once he gets going and is leveled up something that this deck is capable of doing i've scrimmed yang on this it's kind of scary sometimes all right well then i'll take your word for it and i'll i'll wait to see what we see from that but on the flip side we're going to take a look at a deck from the lunatic uh <clears throat> excuse me the lunatic fringe and we're going to be taking a look at a jinx rumble deck now jinx um or excuse me not jinx rumble a pretty interesting champion he came out with the beyond the bandlewood expansion uh a noxus bandle city dual region champ and initially, we had only really saw him with Noxus, you know, with uh, with Bandle City Noxus decks going for some some big overwhelm cards. But this this deck is a, a huge huge discard deck. Almost all of the cards are are designed to be discarded, and eventually it's going to be Jinx <clears throat> just sh shooting rockets all over the place. Now Rumble is an interesting champion because 
on when you play him, you can discard up to three cards, and you get to choose. Well, not choose, you get to have up to three buffs, and there are some pretty substantial buffs. Now, granted, the rest of this deck is fairly standard as far as discard goes. The only major change is that Bandle City Mayor has been effectively butchered as far as his his, his ability goes. I'm not so sure about Butchered. Uh, brought into line, for for sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Vandal City Mayor, is still, he's still going to generate you a card on play. He's still going to discount that first card. Are you going to be able to play out three Loping Telescopes and then generate Protoporos and then generate other stuff and just fill your whole board for zero mana? No. Should you have ever been able to do that? I no. really don't think so. Um, the card's know. still good. It does seem a little bit out of place in this deck, though, To at least to mm-hmm. me. Um, you, you're not really looking for dual region followers. You're not playing dual mm-hmm. region followers in the deck. So I are you just playing it for generation? And if so, isn't aren't there other cards that are just better for that in these regions? I, I think there's, even within these regions, there's better cards. I mean, the Mecha Yordles are, are fairly good card generating units and they are good units and they also create cards and buff those cards depending on which uh which mecha girl you have in your deck i mean definitely better options here to go with especially s- since the banal city mayor has been nerfed to the point where it's only the first unit that gets played has that reduced cost i think there's probably a lot better ways to go about this especially since rumble could synergize with that mecha yordle tag whereas right now it's just sort of rumble is on the board as a a strong quick attack overwhelm card, which which works. It's it's definitely a, a valid unit to have, but there's definitely a better option, I think, for the Bandle City Mayor if the only goal that you're looking for out of this card is to generate something useful. Actually, Dom, and when you said uh, when you said Mecha Yordles, you reminded me they this deck is playing Scrap Heap, and Scrap Heap does create Mecha Yordles, a lot of which are dual regions. So there is a bit of a benefit to this Bandle City Mayor, regardless of the fact that Rumble is the only main decked. Uh, multi-region unit a lot of those generated cards are going to be able to come out discounted that said i agree with you i think i would have liked to see the three mana mecha yordle generator played over top of this or even the four mana one which discounts whichever you yordle you play uh, Mm -hmm. you choose by one and then there's one that also grants one spell shield which could be very very valuable in a meta like this but aside from that i think overall i i like the deck i like where it goes i think a lot of the rumble cards are very very strong and they could help uh a discard deck it's just going to come down to like what what angle i think unhelpful yoda wants to try and play the deck is he going to try and play through the jinx or play through the rumble or realistically he's trying to play through the drinks he needs the rumble i am not sure to be honest, I, I did try a deck very similar to this at towards the start of the season when Rumble and all his followers were released, and it kind of folded on me and felt really, really bad. So I'm wondering if Yoda can make it work. I'm wondering if maybe the meta shifted enough that now this is a stronger deck than when I initially tried it. And I'm hopefully we can see, we can find out. Yep, but with that, we do know who the first game is going to be between. It's going to be between... Um, between Yang and Dalton. So it's going to be a fairly interesting first lineup. We have Yang from Wombats 1 having the Thresh Viego, the Ionia Shirima Kenan, <coughs> Kenan Ari, and the Aphelio Tsunami that we were looking at just earlier. And then for Dalton, we have the Poros, Elise Viego, and Warlords again. So Warlords being a staple, but still tonight we have three new decks. Yeah, and Two of them, I'm assuming, are Iceborne Legacy decks, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about that card earlier in the broadcast and just how strong it's become now that it's burst speed instead of slow. And we do see the Viego ban coming out from the side of Lunatic Fringe. No respect for Yang. Um, Yang (laughs) kind of pioneered an Ari Akshan deck at the start of the season. So he's put a lot of time into the pink-yellow region combination. Kennen mm-hmm. obviously fits a little bit better, as we found out, but the decks kind of play out similarly. And then, of course, his homebrew Aphelios Nami deck that he's on and that he's brought back into the metagame. I've seen other people picking it up. It's just left up. Lunatic Fringe not sweating at all. Yeah, I I think that's probably one of the the be- the, the blessings and the curses of this these like newer decks like the Aphelios Tsunami is that no one has no one's going to pay any respect to it and 
they haven't really been shown that they need to yet. And this could be just a, a rude awakening for Dalton. I mean, this could just be the the Nami if I was taking a very, very swift win as both Viego decks are taken off the board. No one really wanting to play around with uh, the stacking churning mists. Yeah, emo emo sad boy is just going to have to continue to be sad in a corner all by himself. Um, mm-hmm. Aphelios is going to be the emo sad boy on the screen for us today. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm hopeful or I'm excited actually that we get to see the Poro deck. We we talked about it, you know, before the the last matchup, but we didn't we weren't able to see it on screen. But now we're going to actually be able to see it in play, and I think it's definitely going to be something to be reckoned with. I think arguably one of the the stronger decks, especially if you can get the those uh, Iceborne Legacies out early, especially into something like the the Ari Cannon, because those that deck is obviously full of elusives, and if you're if your uh, daring poros are now six sixes or something or five fives like you mentioned, you can easily block a lot of elusive units. Yeah, you definitely can. Of course, the absolver on top of Ari is going to make her big enough to get through those anyways. But that involves Ari being leveled up, having the absolver in hand, and having a wide enough board set up that you can chop through the entirety of the poros. Mm-hmm. Will you be able to set up before the Poros can? I honestly have no idea, Dom. I've been, I haven't had a lot of time to play in the past couple of days since the patch, so I've only actually seen this Poro deck on ladder once. And, you know, I'm not convinced that it's as strong as everybody's saying. I'm not convinced it's, quite, it's that something we need to be quite so worried about just yet. I think the meta's still adapting. Mm-hmm. I think that we will see some more counters come out. But hey, maybe I'll eat my words in a week. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely going to be interesting to see. I mean, Iceborne Legacy being changed to a burst spell is a huge, huge buff to the card, but it's still being five cost makes it very, very late to come into to fruition. I mean, you're using a one cost unit, obviously with the Daring Poros and it's elusive, and you're waiting till turn five to really start being able to do anything with them, which which is really, really not the thing you want to be doing with something like a like a Poro deck. You want to be able to get a lot of Poros on the board, and if you're waiting around to get this five-cost spell to actually make one of them usable, then it's it's it might not be the best look. It might be a very, very unfortunate time. The nice thing about the buff is that it's now burst speed, so you can preset mm-hmm. up your Poros, and then if they go to remove them, you can just answer that with your Iceborne Legacy. But of course, as mm-hmm. you said, it involves actually finding the spell first and then having five mana available to cast it, something mm-hmm. that may not be the case if you're playing out all your Poros early. And look at this. We do get the star-studded matchup right at the start. Poro Cannon found for Dalton. Poro found, Iceborne Legacy found, and Snacks found. And on the side of Yang, he's picked up the box to push, which is a good find because it is going to let him start picking off these Poros. But the rest of the hand is looking a little bit scary. Yeah, I mean, the box to push, like you mentioned, good for <clears throat> clearing the Poros, but the box to push dealing, box to push dealing damage to itself is not really a good place to be, no matter what card you're really going for. As we immediately run into turn three, no, no waiting around here. We got <laughs> are already straight into it and i mean like damaging the dam- the box of push damaging itself you need a card like pal cascade you need something else that's going to buff it up and wow the iceborne legacy already coming through yeah you were saying it might take a little bit of setup but it doesn't take all that much dom pass mm-hmm. pass into poro iceborne legacy is a pretty strong line especially against the nami deck that wants to be playing the pass pass game anyways mm-hmm. and now we're going to see three daring poros come out on the board without anything to answer there's no elusives that yang can really play unless he's able to find something with uh the the space tea sketcher or <clears throat> really it's just there's nothing he can really do to answer this we'll probably see yang take this damage and then answer with a star shaping just to heal back up mm-hmm. um, that would be the line i'm looking towards of course you don't really want to let your opponent burn oh, all this mana so you do pause. need to cast something yep I like this. I like taking the Poros. It's going to allow Yang to develop some blockers of his own. And Stes goes to throw out the star shaping. Interesting. And actually, I like it because I don't think you're going to have the time to set up this star shaping and then play the unit that comes out of it. And you do also but have is, redundancy in the healing through the Golden Sister. Is that... Okay, that's fair. I I, I, I agree the Golden Sister would be good, but is it, is it really worth throwing the star shaping out? Since it does still heal you five versus the spacey sketcher, which is really out of place now because you don't have 
like uh you don't have a way to really use it you're going to use one mana to summon the space catcher but the nami isn't out so it's, it's basically pointless yeah i'm i'm not sure about that Yang has put in more time on this deck than anybody else, though. So if he's making the call, I'm going to trust him on it. This is probably the right way to go. I think the 4 HP just isn't worth enough to him at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate for Yang, there is a, uh, a troll chant there available. And this Poros Nax that we can see in hand also there. So maybe looking a little bit dead here. Crescent Strike picked up. If he wants it, just a matter of will Dalton develop beforehand and actually opts to take the dog instead, just going to dig further into his deck for something else. Yeah, I mean, looking, I think going to look for cards is probably the best choice here just because there's not a lot he can do to stop this, uh, <laughs> the, this huge, huge board of Poros, except for look for Calibrims or more elusive units. Yeah, and of course, there is the second troll chant available for Dalton. Going to go ahead and stop the Calibrum from removing the Poro. Going to once again present a lethal threat here. Or almost a lethal threat. It's pretty close. One With the Poro, with the Poro Snacks, it is in fact lethal being presented. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, Yang obviously has the uh, one daring Poro save, so he will be able to use something to try and block damage, but Interestingly, he goes to block the four damage as opposed to the five damage. Poro? I think just wanting to set it to one HP for some reason. Although I'm unsure of what that reason might be off the top of my head. Yeah, well, either way, we <laughs> this is going to be a very, very difficult comeback, I think, for Yang. He's going to need to use both Burble Flish's Bur burble fish this round i think just so he has the elusive blockers on board but it's gonna be it's gonna be tough it's gonna be a difficult time to come back from now the shelly pickup is kind of big yang is gonna go ahead and offer these trades see if dalton wants to take it so that way he can then go ahead and set up the shelly and start rebuffing the board but Dalton doesn't even need to take those trades. He has a 4-4 four, four and a 5-5. Five, five. He just blocks. He mm -hmm. blocks those two, and he saves those units. So he still has all four Daring Poros on board. Yeah, it's it's more about clearing off Yang's side of the board so he can develop the develop out mo the majority of the things in his hand. Um, this double Star... Uh, not Starbone. Sigil of... The double dog card, I don't know what yeah. it's called right now, is yeah, yeah. not the, not what you want to see off of these Burble Fishes, Yang. It's yeah. not the worst thing into the end game because it can let you refill your deck with two drops to make Calibrum valid. But right now, dogs are a little bit expensive to play and they're not going to do a whole mm -hmm. lot for you. Yeah, and I mean, the only value is that you have <laughs> the two one-cost spells so you can use the, the Shelly Pass over the Nami ability but like you said, it's going to be filling your deck full of dogs, and you don't really want those just yet. As we look for another Calibrum onto the two health Daring Poro, it's, it feels almost grasping. I mean, there's definitely enough Burble Fishes on board to, to survive the next block or attack from, from Yang, but there's still so much in Dalton's hand that it doesn't even really matter. He can just go find another uh, Poro Cannon and then go like five wide with elusive poro or daring poros as of now yang is safe still does have enough blockers but that second ice porn found oh wow yeah it's a it's an interesting angle here yeah it's he does have the elusive units to block with so but he's just gonna be keeping keep losing this uh He's just going to keep losing board, which is not the place you want to be. Well, might be able to swing it around on the next turn. Does still have the Shelly available. Does have the Golden Sisters in hand mm -hmm. here. Going to see that come down for sure. And with the open swing next turn, we'll be presenting a lethal. So some blocks are going to have to come out. Yeah, and that's probably the, the best thing he can hope for. The only problem I can see coming from that is that Oh, the Aphelios pull could be big, but the only problem is that I he can block a he can like Dalton is able to block 
just a, as much as he wants and then still try and save enough of his daring poros to go for the lethal next turn so he has the the proto poro he has the 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 station archivist and then the 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 happy poro so he easily could block enough damage to to, to healthily live or healthy eh, whatever the the word I'm looking for is and then still have the the three daring poros in hand to try and go for lethal next turn as well yang is going to be able to heal up a good bit of hp here though almost back to full All the way back up to 15. Take out two blockers as well. Two attackers. Uh, just that Iceborne legacy is so <laughs> threatening. That's, That's the, all three though. So Well, the, I believe there's only two in the deck actually. Or and two. the one was generated off of the Station Archivist last turn. So that is every copy in the list. But as we can see, there's also the these Poros Snacks still available. And mm -hmm. that's going to do it. Except there's a Gravitum. So it's not quite over yet. I spoke too soon, Dom. Well, you you do have to worry about the heart of the fluffs, which will take all of those poros and combine them into one. But is that really the the value you're trying to go for here? Since no. it, they will still just only be elusive. Mm -hmm. But it would yeah, be a forty power poro, which would be cool to see. Be pretty funny, that's for sure. <laughs> but I think that is uh, more of a losing line for Dalton. The Aphelios level up does come through. It's gonna let Yang pick up some more weapons and start playing them out a bit cheaper. Unfortunately, does also have to give up the Shelly here just as a blocker. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, no, he does have to use the Shelly, unfortunately, which it's just still such a, a, a difficult place to be in for Yang as he's finding all the, the messages that he shuffled into his deck. Yeah. So. He, he did, in fact, he did indeed find all the messengers, and he is just going to continue to cycle these units out. Um, with the Calibrum that he's picked up now, should in fact find another messenger as well. <laughs> How uh, long can it go on? How many messengers can you find? But he has to find a way to, to get a huge amount of clear this turn or, or something because he doesn't have any more elusive units left. He's, well, he's he, tapped out. He's going to be able to play a double Infernum hand here. On t so he'll go ahead, he'll True. play this. He'll play out a second unit generate the Infernum, play out the Infernum onto the Aphelios, and then go ahead and play the second Aphelios as a third Infernum if he wants. Well, uh, well, now he has to, now he has to be careful of the heart of the, the fluff here coming out. He has to, oh wait, so no. Alright, so he has the Gravitum. Oh, opted <sighs> to take the Gravitum instead. Interesting. I, oh no, but he, I, I like that he chose the Gravitum, but he has to wait he has to he has to expect the heart of the fluff to come out because the heart of a fluff is going to save all the heart that of the fluff is from a the very stun. losing line. If that card gets so played, there's overwhelm now. Surprised. There's overwhelm now. Uh, it, you're still opening yourself up to get gravitum just on that alone. It's so risky. That card is just uh, it's really not the poro you want to see generated. If if the it's so difficult to to say because if this if this second if this uh <clears throat> I can't think of the, the word the if the other moon weapon card that Yang has in head comes out and he doesn't choose gravitum then the heart of the fluff can come out. We'll probably just see some more dogs played out here. Yeah, maybe another oh. gravitum. He has to choose Gravitum here. He does, and he needs to restun the eight, the life steal one, and then oh, okay, opts to stun the overwhelm one, and is going to look for a hush off the top. That is the only out, I guess. I mean, even if even if Dalton life steals, it's not the end of the world as long as he finds a way to stop the damage. As long as he finds an elusive to protect. Like, just a block in general. I mean, the lifestyle thing is the least of his worries right now. Yeah. Does find the elusive, thankfully. So is going to have a blocker for this. And not, not quite dead yet. Imagine we'll see a pass here from Yang. And Dalton will go ahead with the open attack. Opts not to go for the scout attack. Just wants to force as much damage as possible here. Mm-hmm. And... 
wow, the Poros are definitely coming in clutch here for, for Dalton, just summoning more Poros. But unfortunately, that one's going to be taken away immediately. But it's just, it doesn't feel like there's anywhere to go from here for Yang. I mean, he's going to be keep looking for units with the the <clears throat> the Calibrum or whatever. It keeps summoning more messengers, but there's nothing really left in his deck that he what? has to block these elusives, is there? He has an Aphelios, and where there's an Aphelios, there's, there's a way. So... He's going to be able to continually generate these moon weapons and start chipping down this board. There's a chance. It's not a good one, but it's there. <laughs> it's it's going to take so long, so much time, and Dalton just not drawing really anything. I mean, Dalton needs to do basically nothing at this point to win, while his Yang needs to pull every single thing that he needs. <clears throat> Sometimes it just ends up that way, Dom. <laughs> Unfortunately, even these, uh, even the best players do break out sometimes. The messengers continually, there's a star shaping found. That's a potential out. Ooh, the star shaping is big and the, the lifesteal on Aphelios is still good, but there's, there's so many things that can just clear this Aphelios, and you need him to stay on board so that he can keep generating moon weapon. Yeah, you really putting do. your life still. It should have gone on to the the big the big dog. I think so too. I think we we should have put it onto the big dog and just thrown it out, uh, and said, "Okay, we're losing the dog, but so be it." Yeah, I mean, you're gonna lose the dog eventually, but you're gonna lose the Aphelios if you attack her. There's a nine health Poro. Well, you can bluff the Pale Cascade, and I don't know why we wouldn't block with the Poro and just take the Aphelios off the board, but yeah, it, I, uh, it it made it through, so HP gonna get healed up. Oh! Yeah. I mean, wow. This is, the, uh, this is rough. This is definitely not the best place to be, and yeah, this is definitely gonna just be lethal here. There's nothing you can really do. No. There's, there's 23 damage on the board in Elusives, and yeah, very dead. Gonna be it. Yang one, <laughs> recognizing that that was a bit of a rough game with the Garen emote. <laughs> oh well, I mean, can't win them all, obviously. And the 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 Poros coming out to show their strength. I mean, there's really nothing that could be done to yeah. stop like this this huge wide board of elusive twelve twelve por or daring Poros. I mean, it it definitely looked like it could have been good for for Yang early. It's just, unfortunately, he didn't pull the Aphelios until, like, turn 7, when there was already four or five huge daring Poros on the board. I mean, yeah, the Poro deck just kind of hit the nut curve with the pass-pass mm -hmm. pass into the Poro uh, Iceborne Legacy, on top of having the Poro Snacks in hand, on top of then finding a second Iceborne Legacy off of the Station Archivist, with the mana available to play for it. Everything just kind of fell into place for Dalton on that one. Whereas mm -hmm. Yang did end up suffering a little bit. Maybe, like you said, had we kept that first star shaping around, things would have gone a little bit different, but hard to say. As far as yeah. this game goes, I think Yang is a little bit better positioned into this one. Uh, this deck does want to play for more of a fair board. The 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 Siver Auction deck, I mean. Um, it wants to, it doesn't have elusive units uh, that it that you need to be aware of or wary of. And it wants to play very, very, very fairly. That's part of Demacia's well. stick. Demacia, maybe, but there's a lot of vulnerable and challenging in this deck, which very, very not fair, since you get to decide what's blocking what, as the Boktopus comes out to trade away for the Fleet Feather Tracker, and I think the Boktopus could, should probably just be saved for, like, for when this Sivir or this uh, Action jump comes out. Because the Action, the, the Action, not as much as the Sivir, but that's where the... Uh, Basically, all of this power in this deck comes from. Yeah, Akshan definitely did become the powerhouse in the in this deck when he was released. Just uh, being able to get that second landmark popped and then discount all your cards by two or buff himself and Sivir up and give them Cell Shield again. Or even, what's our final option there? Give the entire enemy board vulnerable and allow you to choose your blockers as well as recreating a zero cost version of the most of the strongest unit that's died mm -hmm. on your side. Um, so a lot of good options there. 
Sivir yeah. does come down. This is I mean, this is just part of really hard punished. Yeah. Yeah, this is just part of the thing is like there's a lot of stuff in this deck. I mean, it it says that it wants to be a fair board, but the challenging, the vulnerable, the single combats are just going to deny a lot of that. I mean, Yang Zera was probably or was able to find something to save the box supposed to make sure that the Sivir was cleared this round. But that's just one Sivir out of three, and he's now down two Boxtopus. Yeah, not such a big deal, though, because he does have the second... He does have the first Shelly in hand, as well as ways to find more resources through this Star Shaping, through this Solari Priestess. It does it did also pick up the Challenger off of the first Solari Priestess, the Warrior 5-5 five, five Challenger unit. Not seen too often, but is going to be quite effective good in this matchup. This yeah. Definitely good for this deck. And aside from that, I mean, still, this is a very, very strong start for Dalton, I think, down to, or taking Yang down to 12 health without really anything being left on the board for Yang. I mean, the, the Shelly can't come out until now. There's, uh, the Traveler can't come out until now. The, <clears throat> the Warrior is going to drop instead, actually. But there's nothing to really use the Warrior on. It's not really valuable to use it against the 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 merciless hunter but i mean i guess it's the only option yang just considering burning the mana there and does say yep i'll take your mana probably just going to see the traveler played out here just for some more board presence leaves lots of options open as well as finding you more the destroyer will likely be the pickup here comet is cute for akshan but akshan is not on the field yet and not in mm -hmm. hand. Instead, it actually goes opts to go for the Challenger unit. Zero cost Challenger is very, very powerful with the Shelly in hand and all these spells. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's a good place to go for. But the problem is that Yang still, I don't, Yang still doesn't really have a lot of setup. I mean, the the Shelly is still not out. Nami still nowhere to be seen. Aphelio is still nowhere to be seen. It's at right as of right now. It's going to just be a one cost or a zero cost one one Challenger unit, which. Is not always the best thing to have, but we will see the Sunblast Vigor come out. The and answered by the Shape Stone, so there's no way that the, that Dalton really wants to let the Warrior live. But all oh, the Silence coming out is going to make sure that all that work was for nothing. Yeah, unfortunately, this is going to get punished by the Sharp Sight that we can see in Dalton's hand. Mm -hmm. However, he's not going to generate any lucky finds, and the Serpent will be able to clear that off on the following turn if he wants it to. The real scary thing... Oh, Nami's found. That's kind of huge. I don't believe she's leveled yet. No, she's not. But she is going to be able to present a secondary threat the moment this... She might level on drop. Because she does... I think we're off a little bit still. I think we're at six. But we'll find out. This single combat is, of course, going to allow... Dalton to clear off the Shelly... And wipe the board down if he yeah. wants. I think that's probably what Yang is looking for is to bait out the single combat like right now so that the, the Nami can come down safely whether she's leveled up or not. And it's obviously going off well because the single combat's come out and unfortunately Shelly goes down for it. But the Nami should be relatively secure if, she if it wants to be played. Something is going to need to be played here, I think. I don't think Yang can afford to just skip. But we'll see what he opts to do. Does, in fact, pass. Nami is now leveled up. And that Akshan finally found from the side of Dalton Blaze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's weird that it, we're already at turn 9, and it's only just now that both players have found their champions to really start we're turning this game into... <clears throat> Or ramping this game up, excuse me. But going for the box, I think he just eats this damage. I think he just waits for the Nami to come out so that he can start getting... Oh! Or We've already to... seen a number of combat tricks up from out from Dalton, so the odds of, the third, of a final one being here in this last card is pretty low. And obviously we see that it is the Absolver there available to him. And yeah, mm -hmm. Yang is going to get punished for this, but now there's no Absolver left to try and make a finishing push we are going to be able to see the nami and the shelly develop safely here yang might be able to find his way back into this game 
yeah, I mean, he has the guiding touch, so he still has the heal for his nexus and the draw. I would like to see the Nami come out before this so the Nami can start getting value off, but it's going to be now that we finally see her come out to the board as we have the Burble Fish in hand as well. So this could be a fairly strong start. I mean, there's two elusives if the Burble Fish comes out. But unfortunately, there's only just one spell unless the unless Yang tries to use the, the star shipping to pull another spell. Okay, the Gifts from Beyond is a pretty good pickup here. Mm -hmm. Might just opt to cast the first half and then discard whatever he pulls. Might opt to... Uh, still has one box to put in la left in deck, so it's just going to go ahead and take that crescendo. Mm -hmm. I, I think that probably makes the most sense, just because even if the the box of Puss comes out, one of the... Is it the box of Puss that has less health? Or no, it's the, the Shelly, because the Shelly's on oh. the board already. I... Oh, he's no... He's no other units. He used it. So that's. I only, he, uh, he plays three box to puss. Did he play three box to puss? I don't remember. I thought we only saw two come out. I'm very confused now. I am also confused. And if that's the case, then obviously the, the gifts from beyond would have been better used on like a, a lifesteal or yep. the, the overwhelm. But I mean, I, I could have sworn we saw two. We only saw two box to push, though. I I thought so as well, but maybe we saw a third, or maybe there's just not three. Wait, uh, he's he chose uh, yeah, another he's one. Using it for fodder. He's using it for, fodder. It. He's using it for right, fodder at this point. Right. Yeah, yeah, just wants oh, to be able to generate a crescent strike here. If he's given another action, this is going to be huge. Okay. Wait, you just take this. You just end the round if you're oh. Or I guess not. Uh, you, you're pretty happy using your, your star shaping here because your units are all bigger now, so you can very happily take blocks. You're not going to get mm -hmm. punished very hard by that. The Scourge found, that is going to let Yang end the game. And the pass comes back again. Yeah, I think I think Dalton's just lost on where he's supposed to go from here, especially now that the Scourge has come out. I think this is, like you said, just going to be game. The eight, or the Golden Age is coming out, going to save the Akshan, but for what? <laughs> yeah, Yang has all the options in the world here. Can go ahead and stun. Can just pull and end the game this way. I don't think there's anything that Dalton can do from here to actually let him close this one out. Yeah, that the Scourge pull from the Starshipping is actually just so insanely clutch for Yang Zera to just make sure that there's literally nothing in the game that could happen to stop this, this attack from going off and ending the game here as Yang takes game two and forces the first game three of the night or the only game three of the night yeah i'm super happy to go to game three uh like i was saying before we cut to the first break this is a little bit of a grudge match it is a little bit of a for fun rivalry between the two teams we have a little bit of a history so i i'm happy to see my teammate take it to game three i'm happy to sit here longer and get to cast longer with you so uh, oh, i'm looking oh. forward to it i'm really excited to see what these guys have up for us in this final s night game of the night yeah, and of course we've seen the warlords and the the Nami and <clears throat> the uh whatever the first deck we saw was, but we will be seeing the Kenan Ari Sh Shirima into the warlords deck, and it it might just be a lot uh more of the same, or excuse me, because the the Kenan Ari deck obviously is going to play four elusives, but the only difference is that they're not going to be super strong elusives, just going to be a lot of them that eventually is going to be Ari just attacking six times in one turn. Mm -hmm. Dalton's hand is looking a lot better this time around. Has the Akshan available to him on two. If he loses it by some chance, has the second Akshan there. Has barriers and sharp sights. Also has the rally here as and the Vecaran Vagabond is picked up for later a little bit later on into the game. It's looking pretty good for him. But yeah, yeah I mean... there's nothing to scoff at either. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're they're both definitely off to a good start. Obviously, some recalls would be nice to have for the the droplets, but just having a board that's already this wide is a great place to start. It's, and I mean, you can't really ask for more. You still have uh, a recall in hand. You have a homecoming. You have the the God's Willow. Just so much that you're going to be able to use to protect these cards, really. And we see the recall come out. And a ton of mana being used just to protect the the action, or and then also used to block a two one elusive. Yeah, it was uh, definitely definitely a good recall there. I like that a lot. 
I do like this recovery from Dalton. He says, okay, you stop my auction from attacking, so I'm not going to get this horde level up, but I'm going to go ahead and use my second auction. You're going to lose your cannon. The horde's going to level mm -hmm. up anyways. Haha. -ha. Deal with it. Yeah. Definitely a, 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 a smooth play from from Dalton, like you mentioned, able to finally get an auction level up that he was denied last game. But where do you where do you really go from here? You still have the auction. You haven't found Sivir which is something that you actually you definitely very, very much so need, not found in the predict. And it's sort of just, uh, where, where do you go from here? You have like the Golden Aegis, but without a way to reliably damage the Nexus, what really is the point? Yeah. Um, you do have the Absolver, which is now turned on. So I think Dalton's goal here is to either use the Absolver on a defensive turn or he's either got to use the Absolver on a defensive turn and then attack, or use it on an offensive turn, rally, and attack. Um, but it's not going to work out too well for him here. Yang going to be able to take this Merciless Hunter down with the Twin Disciplines. We'll probably just block out the other two. And yeah. is looking to be in control of the board from here on out. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the place you want to be if you're Yang, you know. He's going to be able to get another draw here off the droplet, and it it's just so difficult for Dalton, I think. Like, where does... Like, you mentioned that we can go for the uh, attack with Absolver into a an Aegis, Golden Aegis attack, but, like, there's just so much that you need here right now, and the Ari we see in hand for Yang Zera could be huge, and there's not really anything to look out for. I think Yang is just going wide to make sure that nothing can really happen from Dalton. There's nothing in Dalton's hand that he, he could use to try and clear this Ari, but man. Ari's still at four out of six, so not quite going to level up on this turn. So what you could do is, uh, yeah, do this. You could do attack with the Morn and then use <clears throat> Ari, and then Ari will level up off of her recalling Kennen, which will then proc her to do that every single time she attacks. Mm -hmm. So the Morn attack first is definitely the way to go for to go in this <clears throat> in this attack here. We do see that that's going to get punished by this sharp sight though. It okay. So oh. yeah, the, I was going to say the only way this gets really punished if this if Akshan blocks the last unit, which he does end up doing. So yeah, the Ari is going to unfortunately be very very punished. But all of these units are saved, so every yeah. single unit goes back into her hand with realistically zero cost. Yes, and we're going to get multiple. We're going to get another draw off of this droplet. The cannon is going to also level up once the Morn is replayed. So Yang's still looking to be in a pretty good position despite losing this Ari. Mm -hmm. That's also the second sharp sight that's come out from the side of Dalton. And now we see a second homecoming picked up here as well. With eight mana available next turn, I find it very, very unlikely that Dalton's going to be able to actually close out this game um, in any time soon. Like you were saying... It's very, very quickly gotten away from him. Yeah, and, you know, now we we have all those units that were recalled are now just back on the board at full health. Or full, not full health, but like for free, excuse me. And it's it's just such a difficult place to be. Like, where do you, like, quickly we've been mentioning, where do you go from here? You have the, the Absolver, you have the, the Golden Aegis, but, like, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there's going to be blockers, there's going to be cannon, there's going to be something that's going to stop you from doing damage. Yeah, and the droplet is just going to come out and block, chump block this Akshan here. We may even see the homecoming on top of that. Yep, and it looks like uh, Yang has no fear. Does have the Nopify in the case of a sharp sight. Does have the twin disciplines in the case of something else. I don't even know what could possibly do it other than the uh, single combat. Excuse me, I said sharp sight, but I did mean single. Mm -hmm. It's it's okay. It doesn't really matter anymore at this point. Yeah. And I mean, this would have been a great attack for Dalton, but he just doesn't have enough mana. He needs to have enough mana to attack with the Absolver and the Redeemer for the Overwhelm, leading into another Golden Aegis. And it's just it's just not there. It's, he needs to wait until like another turn, I think. And unfortunately, the Vakaran couldn't do anything either. Yeah, and he just doesn't have another turn. This landmark is going to go ahead and proc. Oh. Another Ari found. The landmark's going to pull two, three more units because it's a Wayfinder under there. Although, actually, I think we're out of one drops again. I think I think we've reached the problem where there's only cannons left in the deck, and only one at that, I believe. 
Um, but the Ari might opt to come down here. Does indeed. <laughs> it's. I think he's just, you know, calling that there's nothing in Dalton's hand that he can do. Yeah, and Which... I think that's a pretty safe call at this point. Yeah, if, and... It, yeah, if there was something available, the strike spell would have come out to try and stop the the uh, the recall, but nothing did. So now we're just going to go ahead and see Ari, wop 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 wop, clear out the board. This is why you keep judgment in your deck. <laughs> yes, this is. Our, I have you seen an our, an auction silver deck playing judgment? I, that... I've seen versions of them with one judgment in their deck. Okay, that's uh not. Not something I've seen. Yang going ahead and obliterating his entire board it's in an act of BM says, I don't even need these cards anymore because you're dead. Goes ahead and yeah. removes this entire board and does <laughs> close out that series two to one. So that was a heck of a game. That it's, the whole yeah. series was a lot of fun to watch. That first Poro game, super exciting. Really mm -hmm. great to see Dalton high roll and take that one home. Yang comes back with a vengeance in game two, says, nah, you can't beat my deck twice in a row. I built this. I know how to play it. You're going to suffer now. And then in game three, just takes a commanding lead, says, this is why you should ban Akshan Ari. The deck is tier zero still. Monty's <laughs> wrong. The deck is broken. Ban it or lose. And yeah, Dalton ended up losing. Yep, I, I would have liked to see some more Viego action, but I, I can never be too, ha or too disappointed in some more Ari cannon play. But I mean, it was very, very interesting. A definitely competitive series, you know, back and forth, obviously coming down to really the last card in, in the first match. But then, you know, the final game, the Ari Kennen, too strong, like you mentioned, to handle. And he really just, just ran away with it, like you said. So with that, that will be the final game of the night here for us on the Runeterra Academy Weekly Le or Legends of Runeterra League brought to you by Metify. Do you have anything you want to leave us with, Monty? No, I just want to thank you guys very, very much for having me. Once again, I know I told you guys while we were off broadcast uh, <laughs> that I really appreciated the opportunity, and I wanted to say it on broadcast as well. And I wanted to say, go Wombats, we wiggle, we wobble, we win, because we do. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was very well played by all the players tonight. It was a lot of fun to watch and cast alongside you, Dom. So thank you for guiding me through this and hosting, because you've been excellent as a co-caster. It's been an honor. Oh, well, thank you for joining me, Monty. It's been a pleasure for me as well, but that will do it for us tonight on the cast. No interview, unfortunately, but thank you all for tuning in. Like we mentioned, I'm Domcast. I was joined by Monty Cristo. Thank you all and good night.